Okay, I'm going to explain this one last time, and then I, I literally have better shit to do. Capitalism is about two things, exploitation and expansion. A capitalist is someone who, for example, gets hired as an executive right out of Harvard, engages in corporate mergers for 20 years, and then starts a private equity firm that focuses on leveraged buyouts and property acquisition. In 1990, a 19-year-old Sam Hauser lined up an interview with British media conglomerate BMG and enthusiastically accepted an entry-level job testing CD-ROM drives. By 1996, he was head of development at BMG Interactive. Sam Hauser is not a capitalist. He doesn't even own Rockstar Games. He's been an employee of Take-Two Interactive for his entire career. Here's what we're going to do. All right, watch this. I'm going to solve class reductionism right now. This is how much money you can have in GTA 5. People with more than this much money are the problem. I do not care what Jay-Z said. We are all forced to work within the capitalist system while we sit and stare at all of its massive failures. There are many wealthy people, especially creatives, who have observed the economic instability of the past 100 years and are not afraid to explore the alternatives. This is why the right hates Hollywood. Well, one of the reasons. Just like billionaire philanthropy, giving all of your money away in an active anti-capitalist rebellion will not make those alternatives any more viable. So, from here on out, if you have the question, how can Rockstar Games be anti-capitalist while engaging in capitalism, I'm going to need you to state what you think someone should do with themselves once they have developed class consciousness. Franklin Clinton is a capitalist out of fear. Trevor Phillips is a capitalist out of spite. Michael DeSanta, who benefits the most from capitalism, is also the most vocal about his anti-capitalist beliefs. The Vanderlyn Gang and Grove Street families are communalists who are fighting capitalists tooth and nail and end up getting torn apart in the process. Now, if you want to see some of that real deal capitalism in action, baby, you can look no further than this fucking guy right over here with their stugats. Bribery? Screw bribery. I'll show you how to make them scared. My livelihood destroyed. Persetti, remember the name. Grand Theft Auto Vice City is Rockstar Games' 2002 follow-up to their smash hit, GTA 3, and features the incomparable Ray Liotta in the lead role. Just give us the fucking money! Huh? Tommy Versetti is a hitman for the Ferrelli family, one of three Italian crime syndicates based in Liberty City. Imprisoned for mass murder in 1971, he's released after a 15-year sentence and sent to Vice City to oversee a drug deal. The game opens with an homage to Francis Ford Coppola's The Godfather. Based in 1945, it portrays an elderly Don Corleone hesitantly discussing the drug trade with the heads of the five families. Despite the messaging in the film, My city, we would keep the traffic in the dark, people to call it. They're animals anyway, so let them lose their souls. Yikes. This was not so much a moral quandary as it was a general concern that low-level gangsters could become independently wealthy. Vice City is 24 karat gold these days. The Colombians, the Mexicans, hell, even those Cuban refugees are cutting themselves a piece of some nice action. Threats to the established powers that be include the Colombians, Cubans, Haitians, Mexicans, boss babes, and the alt-right. This whole damn country needs a kick in the ass, and we're the ones to deliver it. So get out there, grab a bike, and show this city how pissed you are. In the second mission, we're introduced to those in power. Juan Cortez is from an unnamed Central American country and was a high-ranking military official for the right-wing establishment through 30 coups. He now lives off taxpayer dollars as a cultural attaché in Vice City. He's joined by Congressman Alex Shrub. Liberals just want to open the floodgates, let anyone in and make you, the ordinary, hard-working men and women, pay for the pleasure. Well, you have my permission to beat them with sticks. We won't prosecute. You'd be doing us all a favor. And Pastor Richards. Liberals, degenerates, the Welsh. They're the ones responsible for the nightmare Vice City is today. The crime in the streets, the parties, the children born out of wedlock to a future of hopelessness. Anyone who does not agree with me is mentally sick and should be shot, I'm afraid to say. We need to build a place to escape these transgressions. Who can be found expressing their fascistic views on VCPR's pressing issues. 
hosted by the amazing Maurice Chavez. <laughs> That's extreme stuff, Pastor. But we'll leave amateur eugenics for a minute and ask our other panelists. If you do absolutely nothing else in this game, you'll get your money's worth by just sitting and listening to pressing issues. Also featuring liberal social activist Caleb Crashaw. Speaking as a sensualist, and by that I mean a very narrow-minded, id-centered man of peace and travel. I recently went to Europe. I think everyone should see it for a week. You really see what's wrong with this country when you visit a European utopia. Things like a journey, public transportation, healthcare, leather shorts, mustaches. When I went to Belize, I helped some villagers clear some land for an environmentally friendly coal mine. We've all got to make some sacrifices if we're going to get anywhere. My dad gave me the money to set up an exciting trust there. Homemaker Jan Brown. I teach my kids history to give them perspective. Last night I was telling them about how Magellan sailed around the Strait of Magellan and met some friendly natives that gave him supplies. Um, then he had to kill all of them. And that's an important lesson about life. If you look at nature, you'll see many species that eat their children to protect them. Th this is especially true of hamsters. It's about putting the family first. That's really important to me and where a lot of my morality comes from. And Florida separatist John F. Hickory. And Mr. Hickory, were you born in Florida? <laughs> what a stupid question of all the cheek. Were you? Of course not. No one's been born in Florida since 1877, but I've been here for five years, which is a very long time. The show ponders the many issues of the day with a healthy dose of absurdist sarcasm. And then, of course, there are the ads. I'm a VIP, and I want to live around people just like myself. Rich and divorced. Shady Acres. I'm Everett Carrington. Shady Acres is an incredible, upscale, state-of-the-art, top-notch condominium developer. Condo. A short drive out of town on some pristine wetlands. Away from the noise and uninvited diversity of the city. Shady Acres. And when you buy into that dream, that is Shady Acres. Not only do you get a luxurious 5,000 square foot condo with underground parking for your newly acquired sports car, but there's also a jacuzzi for entertaining. Jacuzzi. Each condo is tastefully furnished with a stock bar and an exotic waterbed shaped like a dollar sign. Shady Acres is owned by Avery Carrington a, quote, extreme capitalist whose first gig for Tommy is to have him escalate a workers' protest to violence so it can be broken up by Vice City's private security company, Patrol Invest Group. Fix out, boys. Let's crack some gun skulls. Unlike the protagonists in other GTA titles, Tommy Versetti seems to really get along with the bourgeois scum that require his services. And the two remain good friends throughout the game. What you need is a legitimate front, Tommy. Real estate. It's never done me no harm. Not only is Carrington into union busting and extortion, in his spare time, he enjoys pitting poor brown people against each other to lower real estate costs. Now nothing brings down real estate prices quicker than a good old-fashioned gang war. Don't worry, you get to kill him in Liberty City Stories. And, spoiler alert, he gets eaten by a cannibal who is supposed to resemble Donald Trump. Anyway, there's not a ton else to talk about in this one. Tommy is just kind of a soulless asshole that does whatever he has to do to impress each gang, and then spends the rest of the time buying up properties and expanding his empire. He also takes out the Colombian Ricardo Diaz pretty early on, so we can assume that this just opened the door for the CIA to walk in and start supplying product. Grand Theft Auto Vice City was designed to push the boundaries of gaming, attract a large audience, and make a bunch of money. In that order. The political messaging might be an afterthought, sure, but you have to be stupid not to see it. They didn't have to make VCPR. Besides that, Vice City was inspired by movies like Scarface and Goodfellas, which are cautionary tales of greed and lust for power. These characters were not created to be idolized. In regards to what politics I think the Housers actually subscribe to, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Outside of America, there's such a thing called a left libertarian. In simple terms, a left libertarian believes that the government should stay the fuck out of people's personal lives while offering things like a social safety net, health care, education, women's and minorities' rights, things like that. And like, that's it. That's just what the government does. Compared to right libertarianism, left libertarians, quote, view any concentration of power into the hands of a few whether politically or economically, 
as antithetical to freedom and thus advocate for the simultaneous abolition of both government and capitalism. Thanks for watching. This is my least favorite GTA game by far, and the remaster is just awful to look at. It, it was way worse than I expected it to be, but I'm glad I played it. Much more on the way. I just picked up Max Payne 3 recently. Say what you want about Americans, but we understand capitalism. And assuming I'm not homeless in the next few months, I think I'll get into the first Red Dead Redemption after that. Also working on GTA's anti-capitalist message part two, so stay tuned. And now, for all you confused libertarians out there, we leave you with this kid's cartoon from Vice City Stories, entitled The Barfs. Good night, and good luck. We're the Barfs! We're never red! We hate anything foreign! We live in a tree separately! We swing like a rabbit warren! We're the Barfs! We each have a gun! Firearms is for protection and fun! Most of all, Barfs hate cherry! We keep a national anthem blaring! Big major Barf! Baby Barf! Chunky Barf, too! Smoky Barf! <laughs> Tiny Barf! Fruity Barf, how do you do? Now you know our barfy song! Grab a gun and sing along! Cause before we're through, you'll be barfing too! Yeah!